good friend from California, Grandmaster David Snyder. Yeah! Yeah! Destruction? Mass destruction. Yes. Okay. Well, how many people have, have I, well, oh. my name's David Stanton from San Diego, California. Uh, my, my first friend and student, Zach, is uh, managing the camera. And uh, my studies have been kind of interesting. I've been looking a lot at ways to really idiot-proof a lot of what we do. And when I say idiot-proof, I don't mean dumb it down. What I do, what I mean is make it more user-friendly and one of the things I've been studying a lot about is what I've, what I've come to term biomechanical future Ways that we can affect the skeletal structure in subtle ways, especially because I deal with a lot of small people. I have a height requirement in my school. If you're over a certain height, you can't come in. Because <laughs> there's nothing more scary than a big person who's well trained, isn't it? Come on. So that's it. Well, I'm gonna... Yes. <laughs> So I'm going to ask my, my, my student Zach to come out here, but then I'm going to start pulling people randomly for bizarre things. How many people here are familiar with, how many people actually have a spine? Anybody? <laughs> okay, cool. Anybody here you know how the spine actually works? I know I don't, but I make it up for the dog. Okay, the first thing we need to understand is that the spine is the secret to everything. Okay? You guys know what the most important bone in your body is, by the way? No, it's not that one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bone. It's the humerus. This short little bone right here. It's the target of choice in arts like Wing Chun. A lot of Aiki techniques, a lot of Artuite techniques attack those points. Aside from the neurological aspects of it, biomechanically, it's the most direct connection to your spine. The spine directly connects to your center of gravity. Here's the best part. The center of gravity in the body is the ultimate pressure point. And it weighs exactly the same on her as it does on him. If you can connect to a person's center of gravity and control it, you control them. We're going to get a little bit more voodoo-ish in a little bit, but I want to just start with something that we can start to really wrap our heads around and apply to our Q show, our Tuite, and make it just a lot more easy. So the first thing we're going to go back to is our friend, the spine. You have three arches to your spine. You have the cervical arch, and it goes like this. You have the thoracic arch, and it goes the other way, like the humpback arch. You have the lumbar arch. Anybody here familiar with a reflex known as the hangman reflex? If not, you're going to get it. It's going to be your best friend in about two minutes. First thing we need to do when we start playing with this is we need to understand that when the structure of the human body is distorted, the only direction we ever need to move is down. In other words, if I've got him here, just bent over like this, I don't need to pull him, I'll actually make him stronger. I don't need to push him, I'll actually make him stronger. If I drop correctly, he'll just fall. I have to drop from my butt first. So the, the mantra we use, turn your head, drop your ass. Turn the shoulders, drop your ass. Turn the hips. It's called big motor, little motor, but that's not what we're doing. If you base at the, the T1 and the C7, you press here, we compress this way, and then do that drop. Now, to get the feel for the drop, how many of you are jumping kids? Okay. You guys remember when you were in lunch line at school and your best friend would come up to you and they'd go, and they'd just kick your knee out from under you, that little, that little gravity feeling? You want to generate that same kind of energy. Because when you do that, the structure just buckles from underneath. You can put that same juice that I just used to take his structure into any point you want. And now you're smashing eggshells with sledgehammers. Okay? I like, I like to cheat. So. so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to work with all these things and put them all together into a flow pattern that you can just drill this without killing each other, but you just <coughs> So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to press the forehead. If, if you want to go pressure points, you can think 224. You can do it there. You don't have to. The base of the cervical arch or the T1. And what you want to do, literally, is compress like this. And you're going to be surprised when you do this how little you have to do it. But do it hard at first. 
Because it's better you go real hard and get it to work. It won't be too soft. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to base this here, I'm going to base this, I'm going to compress this. When I do this, you see how this is, his hips and his shoulders misaligned? That's all I need. That's literally all I need. If I just press it this way, down he goes. And it's a reflex. It'll work on anybody in this room, as long as you're human. Any Martians? Okay. So from here, compress. I gotta use this. I gotta use different one. Just call people. Kind of sucks, huh? So I'm here. Two sheets, bro. Can I borrow you? Basically, I might have done this at the last camp. Base the, thir the thoracic. Compress. Yeah, it works that fast. It's neurological. Okay? So that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to get your partner, basically the T1 or the, or the C7, and press here. I can get sneakier with it, but let's just get the principles first, right? Now all I want you to do is compress and watch what his butt does. You see it shoot forward? The minute you got that, the only place you've got to go is down. The best part is, Y'all know that your pressure points are actually a self-defense mechanism, right? Not a technique that you can exploit the body's own protective mechanisms to make it do your thing. One of the things that that system is designed to do is monitor the stability and the proprioception around within the body. He's stable. His shoulders, his hips, his head, they're all in alignment. Walk along me. Strong like bull. <laughs> Not so strong. As long as we drop from beneath. The architecture of the human body is designed to be strong from the top down. <laughs> where you can actually base on the spine, these techniques become extremely useful. So one of the things that we, got to, that we want to really focus on is what I call the big motor, little motor technique. If I, the body is engineered, <laughs> this is embarrassing, right? The body is engineered to be strong from the top. It's like those little cathedrals in Europe. You know those big buttress windows that the cathedrals have? Yeah, that one little cornerstone that kind of puts everything together? Your body's architecture is a lot like that. It's designed to resist the flow of push down from gravity. But if you sink from underneath, see how the body folds? It folds in a predictable manner. So when you do these techniques, you have to get the drop. And it's in your kata. It's just not explicit that that's what you're doing. And a lot of your, your tai chi movements and these, these dropping and hitting movements, it's that two-stage movement that gives you the juice in your hips. We work the cervical arch first. Base it. See how the pelvis shoots forward? That's all you need. Make sure that you get the pelvis to shoot forward, though. If they're not shooting forward, you haven't activated the reflex. Remember, it's not muscle. It's a reflex. So we have to, we have to get that to work. Now, we can cheat. We use pressure points. This is a really cool big pressure point small people can use. The next arch we're going to work is the thoracic arch. Now, to me, this is the most challenging one. But it works pretty much the same way. I said earlier that the spine stacks on top of each other like a set of dishes. All we want to do is get a little bit of a kink. Kinkiness. In that <laughs> right? so, finally, one of those things, right? 
Sorry about the Spider-Man shirt, but again, if you can't see the butt, you can't copy the butt. So, if you find the rounding of the shoulder blade, right, and you base at the hip, all you need to do is put a little kink in the hose, and down you go. If you have the drop right. Now, if you do this, though, which I see a lot of people kind of default to, because the way the body unfurls in the air, it looks like the body's moving on a diagonal. It isn't. It looks like I'm moving on a diagonal. It isn't. It's the direction I only need to move is down. It's always down. It's just the body unfurling creates the illusion that I'm pulling him or projecting him. Does that make sense? It's an illusion. So when we do this, we want to base underneath the shoulder blade. At the, at the tip of the hip is a good reference point to start. All I want to do is kink the hose. And then just and make, make the drops big for now. Oh, sorry. Uh, make the drops big for now. So you got it. As you get more advanced, it'll become almost imperceptible. You'll just walk up to people and go, and they'll just fall. We call that the invisible pro. Because you have to, it changes, sorry, changes from something you see. To something you just feel. Okay? Viva the small people. <laughs> so, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Rock your butt. We'll come back, we'll do the last one, and then we'll put it all together. Right. So, um, can I use you, sir? Yeah. What's your name? Justin Putty, David. Okay, so we worked the cervical, which to me, I think the thoracic arch is the most problematic one for me to do. Mostly because um, it's the hardest one to do from in front. I work a lot off of the, uh, the brush trap counter entries. Right? I also work a lot off what we call the split entry, which is here. It's kind of what Sifu Big and Bottom was showing you today. Right? Uh, another one that I like to work on is called the hairbrush. Hairbrush has two varieties, percussive and sneaky. It's the deadliest move in the martial arts. It kind of looks like this. <laughs> and interestingly, they never see it coming. The secret to it is it has a, a very similar energy to this move in one of your kata, or this move in one of your kata. Sistema has a version of it. They call it the arm screw, or washing the body. We're going, to go, we're going to go a little blunt force first with this, but we're going to work the last arch, which is the lumbar. The lumbar, again, all I have to do is base it anywhere side to side and get those hips to kick. And down they go. It's the most forgiving of the arches. Yeah. It's the easiest one to get, even if you're small. As he comes in, and that's if I don't want to soften the meat, pretend to rise the meat before I put it in the oven. Right. He punches. I could just easily do the Sifu Wills technique. And it's down. It's that fast. Once you've got the basic mechanics, the sequence. I, I could go on for hours, but for right now, whatever entries are your favorite. If you like the brush check counter from Juan Hernis, if you like, the, if you, and we have some JKD guys in here who've done some split entry kind of stuff. Split entry is really cool because I can come off this way. Poke into the eye. As I stretch him out this way, if I want to keep going, it's very easy to do. But if I want to get percussive, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to distort the structure this way. He's already stretched out for this. Anything I want is ricochet right up. Okay? So, come in, here. Base the spine, distort the head, turn him into a Pez dispenser if you have to. <laughs> and just drop your butt. And then once you have that, as he's trying desperately to hold himself up, tap him on your favorite pressure point. Notice how fast he drops. But you better work his ass up, because it's his turn next. Can we get this? Any questions on the lumbar? The lumbar, again, if you can find the hip, the sacrum, you know where you're going. I can base the lumbar off the head, just like we do the cervical arch. 
I can base it off any of the shoulders. I can base it off anything. Anything I got a hold of. As long as I can distort the dishes and just draw straight. Oh, He's always going to fall in line for your shrubs. He's always going to fall in line for it. God, you guys, all you guys are going, that's so cool. You will always fall in line with your weapons. Well, I didn't design the system, I just exploited it. I'm a hacker. <laughs> Thank you. Should we round of applause? Go play.